One of the most difficult things about self-care is our ability to stick to it. We have lives, we have businesses, we have families, we have things to do. And that means when things get hectic, the first thing to fall off our plate is usually the last thing that should. So what I wanna do is talk about five self-care tips, things that will help you to actually stick with your self-care, make it something that is easier to maintain so that you're not burning out quite so fast. I'm Tara Wagner, breakthrough coach and lifelong entrepreneur. I help my fellow entrepreneurs to master the mindset and the skills necessary to crush their goals, not their soul. If that sounds like your jam, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Check out the other videos on my channel after this one, and also check out the links in the description to learn more about how I can support you with both your self-care and your business. So how do you stick to your self-care, especially when you suck at sticking to your self-care? And I can only share this with you because I've always sucked at sticking with my self-care, sticking with any healthy habits. It was something that I really struggled to develop. I couldn't even stick with unhealthy habits. Like I was just a balloon blowing in the wind. <laughs> it was like the least habitual person that you could possibly know, but it creates a lot of problems when you don't have good habits in place, self-care being one of the most important habits that we can have, especially as business owners, especially as people with families, if we are serving other people, helping other people, loving other people, you know, it's the oxygen mask thing. It's a cliche for a reason because you got to take care of yourself. Otherwise everybody suffers. So what are the things that helped me to stick with it? These are the five self-care tips that I recommend implementing first. Number one is to gamify it. If you have this idea of self-care that just isn't fun for you, guess what? You're not going to do it. So find self-care that is fun or make it fun. So a great example of this was I actually, actually needed to take hot baths, like Epsom salt baths. They were prescribed to me by my doctor and I didn't like taking them. They're not fun for me. I'd sit there and just stare at the ceiling and be like, I don't get it. Like what's, what's the point of this? So I made it fun. I started bringing in like snacks, things that I don't usually get a chance to eat. And I started bringing in an iPad and watching shows that I don't normally get a chance to watch. And pretty soon I was looking forward to those baths. Even now I might not go in with snacks and an iPad, but I'm still enjoying it because now I've created a new association. My body's gotten used to the idea that hot Epsom salt baths help my muscles, help my joints, make me feel good. And so now it's fun for me. So do the same thing for yourself. If there's something that you need, what can you do to make it fun? And if you can't make it fun, is there something else you can do that will get you the same results? Because self-care is not about what you do, it's about how you feel at the end of it. And you need to write that down. <laughs> self-care is not about what you're doing. It's about how you feel at the end of it. If what you're doing is not making you feel great, it's not really self-care. Another way to gamify it is to make it a challenge, whether that's a five-day challenge, a 30-day challenge, or making it social by bringing in other people and you're challenging each other. Whatever you can do to make it fun, make it interesting, make it more likely that you're gonna want to do it, that's the secret right there. Not forcing yourself, not trying to push yourself through. We've only got so much willpower. We've only got so much self-discipline. That's something we develop over time. And in order to develop it, you use things like gamifying it, making things fun, making it social so that it's enjoyable so that you can build that self-discipline throughout it. The second self-care tip that I have for you is to reward it. And I know a lot of people kind of frown upon this. They think that rewards are a bad thing, like I shouldn't have to bribe myself or I shouldn't have to do this. The truth of the matter is that it's just psychology. Like our brains run on hormones, right? One of those hormones is dopamine. And when you get a reward for doing something good, it shoots off dopamine. And dopamine is a little addictive and it makes you want to do more of the thing that got you the dopamine. So what can you do to reward it? This could be a sticker chart, <laughs> literally. Like there's a lot to be said for sticker charts, especially if you grew up with them, they're going to make you feel good. I love to do 30 day checklists where it's like, okay, I'm going to try to do this every day for 30 days and I'm not going to go for perfect. I'm just going to go for how many can I get? And that little challenge, that little reward of like checking it off, man, I just comment with checklists. If you know what I'm talking about, where it's just fun to like mark stuff off, especially if you've ever written something down that wasn't written down that you already did just so that you can have the joy of like marking it off. If you know what I mean, 
you know what I mean. Another way to reward it though could just be tiny splurges, right? Like a little bit of ice cream or chocolate or something that feels good. Hopefully not something that you're also trying to avoid, right? Like if you're trying to cut out sugar, ice cream is probably not gonna be the best bet, but doing something to reward it that actually feels like a reward or building up those checklists and when you get a certain number of checks, you go out and you buy yourself something nice work towards something that gives you something in return because self-care, yes, it's giving you a lot in return, but it's not always as tangible. And our brains, they just sometimes need that tangible reward so that we can see the progress that we're making. Pretty soon you're not gonna need that anymore. Pretty soon the reward is gonna be feeling good. But until you get into that space of actually feeling good, do something to help you stick to it. Just hack your own psychology and use what works. Stop feeling ashamed if you gotta use a sticker chart to get some stuff done. Because if it works, it works and that's the point. Okay, so number three is actually to checklist it. For all the reasons that I just said, but also I want to say when you're doing this, it's really important that you start small. I have a really big checklist every day. I have a checklist of supplements. I have a checklist of habits and it's a lot. The only reason it works for me is because I didn't start with a lot. I started with a little. And if you haven't seen my video on why you should not try to reset your life <laughs> and try to make over everything all at once, I highly recommend you watch that video because it's a really important message. We need to understand that we can't make massive changes all at once. They're not sustainable, but when you're doing Doing something like a checklist, start with one thing. I just want to nail this one thing. Let me try to nail this one thing every day. I don't even care what time it gets done. I don't care how well it gets done, just that it gets done. And then slowly over time, you can add to that checklist. So don't start off trying to be perfect. Don't start off trying to make over everything. Start off realistic. And then over time, as that checklist, as that one thing becomes really stable, you can add another thing to it and add another thing to it and slowly build on it over time. Number four is to schedule it. Schedule it like you would schedule an OBGYN appointment or a proctologist appointment if you're not a woman. Schedule the appointment, schedule your self care, schedule it as though it is an actual appointment with somebody else that you're not going to cancel. And if at all possible, actually schedule it with someone else so that you're less likely to cancel, right? So for myself, I know that I want to stop working at the, at a certain time every day in order to help me do that so that I don't burn out. What I actually do is I schedule my self care appointments, a hair appointment, an acupuncture appointment, a massage appointment. I schedule it at that time that I don't want to be working because this forces me to stop working and it forces me to go and take care of myself. If I don't have it on my schedule, it doesn't happen. If it's on my to-do list, but it's something that actually needs to be on a schedule, it's probably not going to happen. If I can get it on a to-do list and a schedule, that's a much better likelihood of actually like making it happen. I always tell people in the inner circle, success is scheduled. Anything you want to be successful at, you need to get it on your calendar. You're going to need, you need to know how long it takes to do it. You need to know when you're going to do it and actually place it on your calendar. Not because having it on the calendar itself is going to be the magic formula, but because the work that it takes to actually get it on the calendar to figure out, okay, how much time do I need for this? And when am I going to do this? And the planning around that, that is what is usually necessary to make sure you actually do the thing. So do the steps, get it scheduled so that you actually do the thing. And if you do not have time for self care, Make sure you get the self-care in seconds training. It's below, it's free. It's gonna walk you through some mindset shifts that are gonna be really necessary, but it's also gonna show you dozens of different ways that you can start sneaking in self-care in as little as 30 seconds. So even if you do not have time for self-care, I'm gonna show you how you can still make it happen. Number five, the fifth self-care tip is to tie it in. And what I mean by this is you need to tie this into your integrity. You need to tie this into your persona, your sense of self, who you are. You need to tie this into your goals. You need to tie this into other people, right? The more that you can tie this into who you are, what you're about, where you're going, why you're wanting to do it, all of those things help you to actually have the motivation to do it. If it's just a thing that you think you should do, guess what? It's not going to get done because you're going to do the thing that you want to do. You're going to think, do the thing you're most motivated to do. You're going to do the thing that excites you, but you're not going to do the thing that's necessary to maintain all those things, which is your self care, right? But when you tie it in, when you say, I am a person who takes good care of themselves. I am a person who sets an example for my children. I am a person who sets examples for my clients and customers. 
customers. I am a person who believes in health and well-being, right? If it becomes a part of who you are and it becomes a part of your why, it's important for me to do self-care because I want to do all these things in my life. It's important for me to take good care of myself so that I'm able to reach these goals. When you know the importance of it, both in your life as well as to yourself, it is much harder to neglect that self-care because now it's not just what you do, it's who you are. It's what you're about. It's where you're going. It's what you're creating in your life. Self-care becomes part of the mechanism to have the things that you want to have or do the things that you want to do. And without that self-care, you know, you can see that there's a tangible part missing. This was the key thing for me. When I realized that everything that I wanted was being stopped by my health, which was being stopped by my, my investment in my health, how I was taking care of myself, what I was doing to maintain my energy or to heal my body or to manage my autoimmune disorders, those things, when I had that realization, everything switched because now it wasn't like, oh, I should take care of myself. It was no, like I set an example for other people. Other people look to me. So I need to take care of myself so that I can set that example. I have big goals and dreams and a vision for my life. I want to be able to have a successful business. I want to be able to travel. Those things are going to hinge on how I feel which means what I do today is gonna to impact how I'm doing five years from now. That was the key thing for me. Once I switched it, I tied it into myself, I tied it into my why, I tied it into my goals, I tied it into my business, I made it a business priority and not just a thing that I had to do, that's when I really started to do it. All those other things helped me to do it, right? Gamifying it, scheduling it, doing all those other things helped me to figure out the mechanics of it, but really tying it in, especially tying it into this is who I am. I am a person who values herself. Once I realized that, the rest of it just became a matter of the mechanics, just building the habit, just, just creating the mechanisms that would allow me to continue to move forward. So that's probably the most important piece. And I would love for you to comment, who are you in terms of self-care? Like, how do you tie this into yourself? I am a person who what? Comment below with that because the more clear you get on that, the easier the rest of this is gonna become. I know how hard it is to stick to your self-care and put everything else first because everything else is sexier <laughs> or more fun or more interesting or more direct. Like it's more obvious why we wanna prioritize it. And it's so easy to neglect this. So what is it about this? What can you tie this into that will help you not want to neglect it anymore? I don't wanna neglect my self-care. I still can fall into the habit. Don't get me wrong, I'm still human. I still have times where I'm like, crap, I have not been taking care of myself and I feel it. And unfortunately, I feel those things really fast. Or maybe that's fortunate because it makes me turn it around faster. Once you know it, once you have it, once you understand it, it's just not a big deal anymore. Like it's so much easier for me now than it ever has been before because it's who I am, not just what I do or what I need to do or what I should do. So I'm gonna stop rambling about this. I would love for you to watch the three videos I have on burnout. I'll link them below. Burnout symptoms, how to avoid burnout, and how to recover from burnout. Also check out that self-care in seconds training if you need more support with this because most of us do and that's okay, you're human. And fist bump in the comments if you made it to the end of this video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up if you found it encouraging, helpful, inspiring at all. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.